pop quiz. What makes our food? Our clothes, our homes. If you said nature, you're right. Nature produces all the things we use every day, from what we eat to the air you just breathed in. And if you said people, you're right too. We often forget we are part of nature too. Just like the savanna grasses in Africa or the giant pandas from China, we are part of this ecosystem. But unlike others, we are at the very top of this food chain, dominate the ecosystem and affect the others in a profound way. Our big brains have allowed us to use the planet's resources in unique ways, taking us very far. Yet one of the things that has taken us to the moon and back may be the same thing that keeps us grounded: carbon. This chemical element is the basis of all known life, and it's everywhere. It's in our clothes, our food. It's in this cute red panda. Carbon is also in the fuels that power our lives, whether it's gasoline for getting around or wood for cooking. But when burned, these fuels release its carbon into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. Enter the carbon cycle, nature's way of moving carbon around and balancing life on this planet. Quick example: we and other animals exhale carbon dioxide or CO2. Trees eat that and store the carbon. That's called carbon sequestration. The trees then produce oxygen. We can breathe again. Carbon cycle. Nice. But our everyday activities impact the Earth's carbon cycle and is threatening the very system we depend on for fresh water, clean air, and healthy food. We are warming our planet, creating unpredictable weather, and degrading the environment for all life. It's a good thing forests exist. Besides taking in carbon dioxide and producing oxygen, trees in the soil they grow in collect rainwater and naturally filter it before we use it. And their roots keep soil in place, preventing erosion, which is especially crucial in mountainous areas. So cutting down trees for things we use every day, like farmland, firewood, and paper, isn't always a good idea. Not only do we add carbon into the atmosphere, deforestation reduces the forest's ecosystem services it can provide to us and the carbon cycle's ability to absorb and balance the excess. Luckily, there are many things we can do to help our forests. The Nature Conservancy's reforestation projects in China are providing many significant and measurable benefits for the climate, wildlife, and people. Residents of Sichuan Province living near these project sites are seeing firsthand how the simple act of planting trees can result in great things. Dangerous erosion is minimized. Crops benefit since there is cleaner and more water in the ground when trees are present. Tending tree nurseries and the work of planting trees creates jobs. And the communities planting these trees can also earn income from the carbon their forests absorb by trading credits on global markets. The healthier their forest is, the more credits and money they can earn. This all goes to show that trees are often far more valuable standing than cut and converted. Along with our other reforestation projects around the world, these large-scale forests do their part to offset greenhouse gas emissions, mitigate climate change, and give back to the natural world that makes life possible and sustainable. Not a bad deal at all. Nature works hard, and that's why we work hard for nature.